I'd like to call the Public Service Committee meeting to order. Um, uh, is there an approval? Oh, all members are present. Is there approval on the minutes from our past meeting? I have a, a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Hearing and seeing none. Uh, we have nothing on the old agenda except for, uh, well, the two items I imagine are going to be filed. Would that be correct, Mr. Clerk? There are objections to uh, Talmadge Avenue. I'm going to imagine. Yeah, they'll, they'll come okay. up for objection. Okay. Yeah. Assessment right, equalization. Filed. Okay, thank you. We'll go now into the new agenda and for public service and it's number seven. It's an ordinance authorizing the director of public service or his designee after publicly advertising for bids to enter into contract or contracts for the construction of citywide sidewalks 2019 and declaring an emergency. Would that be you? Madam Thank Chair, you. members of the committee, this is our uh, annual uh, program yeah. for our sidewalk. The way it's worked, but yeah. We expect that uh, this year we'll get about 212 projects done. Last year we did about 196. And we would ask for consent. Are there any questions from the committee? Councilman Kamer. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Obviously, you already know I'm a huge advocate of this program. Same amount of money. It's a little bit less this year. I think uh, 100,000. 100,000. That's what was uh, in the capital budget this year, yes. Mm. So that means less sidewalks, right? I think we're going to, we had some big retaining walls last year. I say last year we did 196 projects. This year we're projecting about 212 because there won't be those retaining walls that we have to rebuild. So we're hoping to get about the same number of projects done, maybe even a little more. All right. We're we're basically still like what a year behind or we right are on. going to be may of 2018 when we get done with this year so it'll be almost a year and a half but that would be the projects that we get this year during 219 mm -hmm. you know we'll add to the list this year so really only like a half a year okay so do you think the funding might come back in uh 2020 or do you think we might be at this level with the funding I think we'll probably see how the projects go and the cost and then we will request the amount that obviously is necessary to okay uh, one other question I know I left you a message a while back about the paperwork that you send out are we making sure that we yes. put on there about yes I'll get residents? you a copy of the revised paperwork oh, okay I appreciate it so uh, just to tell the committee I requested uh, or a suggestion to mr. Moore about uh, I've had a lot of residents, their concern is they just mail the form back and maybe sometimes it gets lost in the mail or lost in, you know, wherever, <laughs> somebody's office and I encourage them to always make a copy before you send this paperwork back. So you have a copy too. Uh, so you don't have to start the process over again. So I suggested to John Moore that we include that on the uh, forms that we send out. And obviously you have again, so I suggested to John Moore that we include that on the uh, forms that we send out. And obviously you have a revised form you just mentioned. So if you could get us or at least the council, I appreciate that. So thank you. That's all I have. Uh, Mr. Moore, with the projects, um, can you explain what a project might be from the smallest to like you just said, retaining walls. So yeah, in certain instances, we have to build retaining walls because when we cut the, the uh, sidewalk out, you have to rebuild what was there before. But most of the projects are just adding panels of sidewalk in front of people's homes where the street trees have caused them to raise up. So we'll pull out two, three panels, cut the tree down, grind the stump, pull out the panels, and then and replace the panels, just the ones that are uh, raised up because of the tree. Okay. Thank you. Hmm? Anyone else from the committee? Councilwoman Sims. Thank you, Madam Chair. So on the process, I, I don't know if I fully understand the process. Um, do we prioritize, uh, say, the sidewalks where maybe there's an oversized tree trunk um, that buckles the sidewalk? Uh, People actually submit request forms for this work. So it's kind of done as on a first come, first serve basis. If there are issues with uh, uh, raised up sidewalk that are causing problems that are identified, 
by uh, the city staff will replace those just as a matter of work. safety issue. Yeah, safety. So this is outside. This is out. This these funds. The issues like that would be outside of these funds right Correct. here. So perhaps in, instead of, I, I like um, Councilman Kamer's idea, uh, maybe if we made it two-part uh, carbon so that they can complete it and retain a copy versus having to go out, take a, make a copy, and just send it back. Thank you. Councilwoman Mobian. Let me make sure I understand what you just said. You have a certain area or streets that you're gonna do now as sidewalks? Or are you waiting for people to send you requests? Yeah, the, the, this program is done by request. So a person fills out a form, they request their sidewalk to be repaired. We go in, do the work, and then it's assessed over a period of time. Or they can pay cash. So what the list that you might be working from now, the request came in? 2018. So if people make a request in 2019, then what happens? They just go That work will get done either in 19 or 20. 19 or 20. And we advertise this. How do people know that they can do this? It's been a standard city program for a number of years. And, I mean, and, and people throughout We talk about city. it at all the public meetings and, and, and when we go around the city. OK, people, I, I, I don't have a sidewalk I, in, my, in front of my house. But if you had a tree that may be down now, but your sidewalk is still uneven and all of that, you can request you can through, to have that. It's generally through 311, you can request a form to fill out to, to request this service. Yeah, I, I don't need one personally, but I'm just trying to figure out how you would do it. Just call, is, is there a number you call? 311. 311 and just put in the request that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how do you know if you're on the list? You can contact the engineering bureau. I mean, they keep a running list of requests. So you'll fill the form out and send it to the engineering bureau, and then I, I would follow up and make sure they're on the list. OK, OK. Yeah. Any other questions? Hearing and seeing none, what is your pleasure? Consent would be fine. Do I have a motion for consent? Do I, I have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing and seeing none, this will pass on the consent agenda. Number eight, ordinance authorizing director of public service or his designee without the formality of public advertising for bids to enter into contract or contracts with Best Equipment Company for the purchase of one used rear loading packer truck and declaring an emergency. Mr. Moore. Madam Chair, members of the committee, you may remember, I think it was last year, we, uh, or maybe the year before, we bought a used packer truck. Right now, we, in the past, we had rented six packer trucks during our leaf season to go out and pick up leaves. Um, last year, we purchased one of those vehicles and we were allowed to uh, reduce our number of rentals down to four. This would be another packer truck that we use similarly for that program, the leaf removal program. We're hoping that then we would be able to reduce our number of rental units. When we rent one, it costs us about $17,000 for the season. That's an eight-week rental. Um, so this, the truck that we purchased over a year ago, it's uh, working as expected. It was a used, used truck, but it's running well and, and doing the job. So we'd like to do it one more time. And how many rentals would we have if we are able to do this? If we're able to do this, we're hoping at the most two. Two rentals. Yeah. And then four that are ours? Yes. Okay. And Four to five. We actually have one that's on its last leg, but we're hoping to keep it running. Um, also, can they be used for anything else besides the leaf? Pickup? That's the beauty of this. When we, when we turn the rentals back in, they're gone. Right. These trucks are used throughout the year by other divisions for other things that we, we do throughout the year. Okay. So they have multi-purposes. Yes. So when we own it, we certainly can take advantage of that. Correct. And we're starting to whittle down what we rent by every year being prudent and only buying possibly one. Yeah, as long as they're on the everyday front line, we can use these, these used trucks and they work perfectly for our needs. When they come up, I would imagine they go quickly if they're worth anything at Correct. all. So would this be a suspension of the rules? We would appreciate it. Okay. Uh, with that comment, I'm not making that motion right now, but I'm, I'm just projecting. Uh, are there any questions or concerns from the committee? Okay. Uh, is there a question?
Councilman Neal. Um, and excuse me if you already answered this. I'm looking at that's 35 is the cost, 200 is what's the lifespan of, of a truck, so to speak? Because I'm, I'm wondering, um, I know we have talked about in the past, and I don't know if we have full use of this, of sometimes doing, uh, going in with some of our neighbors on a truck. Um, I'm wondering if, you know, what's the, what's the expected lifespan on a $35,000 truck compared to a brand new one if we were able to do just that? Yeah, a new truck is like $200,000. Um, these trucks, I say, are used for leaf season, which is about eight weeks. So usually it runs over maybe 10 weeks. Um, so they're not used like our regular frontline trucks. So we're hoping to get a number of years of service out of these. The one that uh, council approved for purchase either last year or the year before is still in operation. And we're still using it. So we're hopeful, you know, that we can keep them a long time. Okay. Um, okay. I, I was just wondering if, if this was something where, you know, 35,000, we get three or four years, 200,000, we get yeah, when, when you rent a truck, I said it was 17000 and when we go past our eight-week thing, we have to pay even more. So if we can get two years out of more money ahead, but we're going to get more than two years. We're going to get at least five. I'm going to say longer than that, I hope. Okay. Just, just would like to know in the future, if there is any value in doing a joint purchase with uh, Falls, Barber, and Norton, Stowe, any of those, and, and sharing these kind of things, or if, if it would be we would all want them at the same time, so that would – discount that out. That, that's just my my one question, because maybe we could pay the 35000 with three or four of our neighbors. Have to be a little bit more than that if it's 200000 and get a new one and get more run for our money. That's all. Thank you, Madam Chair. Surely. Well, I think if I do my math correct, if it, if it runs us 17000 for an eight-week rental, um, that's just for eight weeks. And we normally do a couple extra weeks there. Um, if we can um, just it, in two years, just on those 16 weeks, if we're talking eight weeks, eight weeks, we paid off the truck if we didn't use it for anything else. So with the advantage of us being able to use it for other things, um, it's terrific. Uh, OK, is there any other comment? OK, and uh, I think I have a motion. Would you mind saying that motion again? Is there a second? I have a motion and a section, second for suspension of the rules with a favorable report. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing and seeing none, we will go forward with that. And then number nine is an ordinance authorizing the director of public service or his designee to enter into a contract or publicly advertising for bids for the removal and abatement of the vinyl flooring in certain rooms in the Joy Park Community Center and declaring an emergency. Mr. Moore. Madam Chair, members of the committee, um, the original floor in the uh, Joy Park facility was put in in 1974. This is the kitchen, the men's and women's restrooms, and uh, the multi-purpose room. This would allow us to remove the existing tile, which in this case has asbestos in it, mm -hmm. and then uh, replace it. And consent would be fine. I hope we replace it with the same sort of tile and not the asbestos when you look at the longevity of this and how much use Joy Park gets. That's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any comments from the committee? Any, any questions from the council? Councilwoman Sims? So is this work being done in the evening or we're just um, kind of because of the nature of the work, it'll probably have to have sections closed off and then they have to put in the, the right ventilation to make sure that the friable asbestos doesn't get throughout the building and, and obviously you don't want anybody breathing that. So it'll be a very controlled environment and that's why we can't do it in-house. We generally do these things in-house, but in this case, it needs to be done by a company that does this for a living. Yeah, I was just concerned about that because you have the, the clubs over there and so much activity over there that we were doing it in a way. It's a very controlled environment. So we plan to start that when? Uh, we have to bid, so it, it, you So know, what do you anticipate? We need it to summer? get it done this summer, for okay. sure. Thank It'll you. It'll have to be bid. Anyone else? Okay. And just to add a note to that, uh, Akron Public Schools, when I worked there for 30-some years, we had a best asbestos removed during the day 
but the way that they can't contain it and the suits that they wear, they were fine. Um, but that's why they get paid the big bucks is because they Hopefully do it that, that way. Big. So uh, I have a motion for consent. Is there a second? I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Any opposed? Hearing and seeing none. Uh, it passes on the consent agenda. Is there anything else to come before public service? Okay, having said none, we will be adjourned. Thank you. Okay, next we have public safety. Go ahead, buddy. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move forward and call a public safety meeting to order, please. All members are present. We did hold a meeting, not last week, but week before. Can I get approval of those minutes, please? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? All right, we have three new pieces in front of us today. Uh, first one, uh, authorizing the purchasing agent without the formality of advertising for bids to enter into a contract or contracts with Matrix Point Software LLC for the purchase of user license to assess and use the matrix point software and declare an emergency we have uh, several individuals but i'll let our deputy mayor of public safety charlie brown introduce everybody involved today thanks mr Kramer, thank you and the committee thank you for the opportunity to share about this this is a software that will enable case tracking uh, for the sharing of information between detectives and prosecutors um, it is paid for by the grant um, we received it uh, came before this body I'm not sure maybe three four months ago I'm not exactly sure the date but so I'll be uh, more than happy to answer any questions from any member of the committee all right thanks uh, uh, any, introduction wise yes major please. Jesse Lisa is um, two down from he's a uh, subdivision command for a detective bureau and then major capers is a subdivision commander for um, the Uniform Subdivision and to my immediate left is Mark Pettit, the CIO, um, acting CIO for the City of Akron. All right, thank you. Uh, any questions, uh, committee members? Councilwoman Sims, please. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. If we can just get a kind of like an explanation of what the software is for. I, I see, and, and maybe in adding, uh, answering that question, is this the use of the software uh, just limited to Akron safety forces or do we share that outside of outside of our our immediate safety so department? The, this is additional licensing <clears throat> for the matrix software system that we have put in place already mm -hmm. uh, that's shared by the prosecutor's office Akron public safety there are other communities that use the same software we had a leveraged purchasing agreement to have decreased licensing um, but those are, are typically used in silos for each community so you said le leveraging for purchase purposes, but they don't have access to our information. Is um, that correct? The information is only shared when the agency deems it appropriate to share with the other agencies. So the answer is, as a as a practice, no. But if there are correct. occasions where 
if it's merited, we'll, sh we'll share that yes. if that's the answer. Thank you. Thanks, Councilwoman. Any other questions, committee members, comments? Other council members? All right, with that, uh, what's your pleasure? Suspension on the rules, please. On this one? Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. Skorsky. All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? All right, we'll uh, suspend the rules on that piece this evening. Thanks. On to our next piece, uh, authorizing the mayor or his designee without the formality of publicly advertising for bids to enter into a contract or contracts with the LLC for the purchase of dedicated public safety department servers and software at Involta's Akron Data Center and declare an emergency. Charlie? Yeah, Mr. Pez can speak to this. He's the most knowledgeable. So this is uh, to replace some of these server and system infrastructure for public safety. Uh, it's leveraging uh, what we're doing with the uh, new CAD project, um, some of the systems and the backups. Uh, so hence, that's why we picked Involta. This will improve redundancy, security, retention, storage for the public safety systems that we use on a regular basis. Um, better uptime and re reliability using Involta, uh, their infrastructure as a service. And I'd be happy to entertain any questions. All right, thank you. Any questions from committee members? Councilwoman Sims. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So the cost that we're referencing here, is it just the $80,000 or is it 80, the 388000 So there are, there are roughly $6,000 in startup costs uh, and then the term of 36 months uh, at $10,620 a month. Are you finished with your question? I don't think I, I, I don't think I, so the $80,000, what is the $80,000? I don't have that in front of me. Yet. It's my assumption that that costs probably the remaining fees for the hosting for this fiscal year. Since so who would know? Who would know the answer to the eighty thousand dollars? <laughs> Hold on one moment. Well. Yeah, that calculation comes out to uh, the remaining months in the year at $10,620. So it probably won't be deployed till uh, the end of June. So I'm sorry, I'm not sure where that number comes from, um, how you derived at the that number, but it'd be nice to kind of have that clarified. But sure. the, is is the so what exactly is the three hundred eighty-eight thousand three hundred twenty dollars for? So that is for a thirty-six month term for hosting systems at Involta. For hosting systems, we're so not we're not purchasing new servers. No. This is this is an infrastructure as a service, is what it's called. So Involta's service to us is what they... So it, it, is, it is security, it is hosting, it is maintenance, it is backup. Um. So this is a pretty significant 
uh, amount of money. So I would just think there would be a little more explanation as to what the resources were for okay. and greater clarity on this dangling $80,000 that's out there. So I'd appreciate really having, having that information. Uh, okay. We said a 36 month agreement to purchase critical services and systems, kind of like, you know, like, like what is that? Okay. Um, so that would be just helpful. All right. Um, th these services that we intend to purchase from Involta um, keep us from investing in our data center here, uh, which is high maintenance from a staffing perspective from a, um, a cost of utilities perspective. Uh, typically, uh, individuals in my position are getting out of the data center business, uh, so opting to host with Involta. Uh, they have the uptime, the resources, the expertise to maintain these key public safety business systems, uh, and, and the uptime required for public safety is, is pretty substantial. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, if you recall, most recently, um, that's why we asked for an overall plan yes. relative to IT. So yes. we don't have to come in and do the, the, the kind of piece this, we're gonna do that and yes. the other. I'm sure that what you're saying is probably true, but it's hard for me to really see that because I don't really know what that is. Yes. We hear words um, like uh, current de deterioration of our infrastructure, but I don't really know what that is. So for me, greater clarity would help me help you to sure. get what you need when I understand what we already have. So uh, that, that is why uh, my, for my line of questioning. So thank you. I understand. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, any other questions, committee members, comments? Uh, council members, uh, we have Councilman Rossdale. Go ahead. Oh, you're gonna grab my microphone. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just, just to pick several times we've asked for information regarding a comprehensive plan. Yes. Um, going back to when Rick Schmoltz used to be here, the city was dead set on um, housing everything, saying servers were the way to go. If I understand you, what this right here is for, is this cloud-based or is yes. this just designated so servers that are uh, being um, maintained by this service provider? This would be considered a private cloud. A private cloud? Yes. Which Okay, this is my concern, and it goes back to the piecemeal piece. We have never been given a, a comprehensive overview because um, for what we're spending here, I know cities that have had their, we use the term smart city, their whole system online, where, I mean, it's not just storing. I mean, they're actually doing their policing from a smartphone. Um, so it would be good for us to have this comprehensive look. I think uh, if it was not last year, it's going back to last year when we were talking about combining some of our service with the county, we had asked at that time, we were supposed to get some information. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that this in itself isn't the way to go, but the way we're doing it, we're just looking at the police department and not looking at the overall city's uh, IT infrastructure. I know we're spending more than so we need to. Um, yeah, I'd be happy to address that. Um, we, we do have, we are in the development of a comprehensive plan in the next 60 days you will see something delivered by me uh, regarding our overall IT strategy. I felt the nature of public safety and continuing to invest in these systems that fits within a larger uh, cloud and infrastructure strategy uh, was important so that we could continue to invest in, in those public safety systems. But I, will, I assure you that I will deliver you a comprehensive plan. And, and again, I appreciate that. But again, my concern is, is that we, like we just passed in the budget where we were getting some more um, servers and hardware because of uh, our uh, system being um, uh, infiltrated and things being damaged. And again, because we, we had to do that, my concern still is that uh, we're making expenditures that if we had this comprehensive overview right now, we may not have to make. So um, let me ask you this. This contract that we have is for, did you say three years? Yes. 
if we find that we can make a better investment by having a more holistic uh, plan, can we end this at any time or are we committed to the three years? We're committed to the three years, but I assure you that this is not a frivolous one-time purchase. It plugs, no, no. It plugs into uh, the um, new CAD system. Uh, and leveraging the investments that we're making there within Volta. No, I'm not, I'm not calling this frivolous, but I'm saying it may not be our best investment. Okay. I mean, because, like I said, going back to 2013 or before 2013, when council was looking at its uh, legislative, because that was the cloud, cloud uh, I mean, uh, servers were the recommendation of the administration, council went that way. We're finding out some six years later that that wasn't the way to go. And even at that time, we had information that it was more cost efficient for us to go with a cloud-based system. So the, the, the information you bring, many on council take as the gospel because they don't have, we don't collectively, collectively we don't have the time to do the research. But because of the recent history with, you know, having servers and having them being um, uh, uh, corrupted not once but twice. Um, I think folks are more sensitive now. So my, my, my only concern is, is now hearing that if we do find out that uh, we can do better by going with a, a cloud-based system that serves not just the police department but our overall city's services, that were locked in. Is there any way we can uh, alter that part of the agreement that if we find something that's better for the city, we don't have to spend that extra couple hundred thousand dollars? Because like you said, you have, you have something to us in 60 days. That'll give us a chance to do our, our vetting of it. Um, yeah, I'll work through those details within Volta. Okay, that, that, that would be good, uh, Mr. Chair. If, if we find out that we have something better, we wouldn't have to be locked into the to the three years of the agreement. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions or comments? Council, council members, anything else? All right, Councilwoman Sims, back to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So currently, when you did the calculations, you said we on the current contract we have about how many more months? We don't currently uh, have a contract specific for public safety with the Volta. That's on behalf of the CAD system, the countywide CAD project. So that's that just that just started, I think, in January, where the initial payments. So, so I'm sorry. Is is this is just a little confusing? So, this eighty thousand dollars really doesn't have anything to do with this. Is yes. that what you're saying? Yes, it does. This is for server infrastructure hosted in Volta for public safety. And the 45,000 is 34,000 is the same. I believe that's uh, separating the costs between police and fire. So, okay, you're right. So, yeah, if I can just get just a little more clarification as to what this is, that would be very helpful. Okay. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Brown, uh, what's your pleasure on this? Is this something that we really need today, a suspension of the rules, or? Okay. Um, the nature of the public safety systems are critical, um, and, and this will allow us to add additional redundancy and backup. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would prefer suspension of the rules. Mr. Chairman, I would ask for a consent <laughs> a agenda if right, you well, wouldn't mind. I'm, hold on, please. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I just asked a question, a question because there's a lot of good questions today, and uh, I think we could have brought some more details and facts into the chambers. Um, but I'll leave it up to the committee in regards to how we're going to proceed. Uh, anything else to add to this piece before I ask for what the recommendation is? Councilwoman, go ahead. Because of the number of questions, if it were placed on the consent agenda, um, could 
could you handle that? Would it, um, would you be okay? Would we be okay? Would, <laughs> would what we're trying to protect be okay? Yes. Okay. No, I, it makes me feel a little more comfortable too because that gives us another week, you know, of making sure uh, all our questions are answered and everything, so I appreciate that. Um, so, committee, uh, recommendation? Motion for consent. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? All right. Uh, if there are any questions moving forward, Charlie Brown, where should they be directed to? Or? Mr. Pettit. All right. He has the email address that did you have, that you have access to. Okay, thanks. How do you spell the last name? I apologize. P-E-T-I-T. -E okay, all right, thanks. All right, moving forward into Mr. our last Chairman. piece. Huh? So we'll, in, a, in addition to any other inquiries that committee members or members of council might have, will that come, the questions that were posed today, will that come back to us in that, in a, in a, in, in a uh, response format that will yes. come to the committee? Thank you. All right, thank you, thank you. All right, moving on uh, to our final piece. Uh, it's a resolution uh, offered by Mayor Horgan opposing the passage of Ohio Bill, Ohio House Bill 174, which would further enroad restrictions on gun possession in Ohio and permit the carrying of concealed firearms without a permit and declare an emergency. And obviously, once again, we have Deputy Mayor Public Safety Charlie Brown. It looks like we have uh, Ellen uh, Lander Nish here. So whoever wants to speak first. I'll speak, Mr. Chairman. Thank you okay. very much. <laughs> um, so I'll start by saying that this is about a 140-page bill, and it just was introduced Wednesday, so I might not be the expert, but I'll do my best to explain briefly what the bill is and why the mayor is opposed to it and why we're asking for your okay. support as well to be opposed. So this is what is um, commonly referred to as constitutional carry. A bill of this nature is introduced um, probably every General Assembly ses session. Um, what's different this year is that Governor DeWine has expressed his general support for the bill, so it's likely that if it is passed by the General Assembly that the governor will sign it. Um, Kasich, on the other hand, was not supportive of this sort of legislation, so it, it has wow. a, a better chance this year than, than in past years. Essentially what it does is it abolishes the current concealed carry license uh, re regulations in Ohio. So you no longer need a license training to carry a concealed weapon, and it also the type of weapons that can be carried concealed beyond just handguns to also rifles, um, shotguns, guns of that nature. Additionally, um, it removes the, the requirement that if you are stopped by a police officer and you have a weapon on you, you no longer have to inform a law enforcement officer that you have a weapon in your car, a, a handgun mm -hmm. in your car. Um, if, you are, if a police officer notices that you are here to be carrying a concealed weapon, it's no longer a valid reason for an individual to be stopped or questioned. So if an officer sees a gun in your waist belt, they can't ask you if you have a license if you're legally carrying that weapon because you no longer need a license. So even if you were a felon who was prohibited from carrying a gun under the law, a police officer can no longer ask you right. about that gun you're carrying just by no gun you're carrying just by noticing that you're carrying a gun. So those are some of the <laughs> highlights or lowlights of okay. the legislation, I'd be happy to answer any questions I can, but essentially we're trying to send our, our strong opposition um, to our, our state delegation. Thank you, Alan, I appreciate that. Um, I do have a question before I turn it over to my colleagues for questions. You two, have you two read the resolution? Obviously you're here in opposition of this. I read uh, the document, uh, skimmed most, but at the areas where it said they were making changes, I did read the document and I'd be okay. happy to answer any questions you might have. All right, so my question is we're going to go to, I don't know if you have the resolution in front of you, but the third whereas, uh, where it says House Bill 104 would also remove the duty of motorists to notify, et cetera. I know Ellen briefly spoke about that, but I, what I want is basically an example or scenario of the current process when an officer is pulling a vehicle over, what he or she is going to encounter in regards to approaching that vehicle, and, and then what the changes would be to that uh, police officer, if you can explain both of those. What should happen now is if a 
law enforcement officer approaches a car uh, being operated or uh, by a person who has a concealed carry permit, the law requires them to keep their hands in plain view and to immediately notify the officer, I'm a concealed carry permit holder and I have a firearm in the vehicle. Um, the way I understand the writing of the House Bill 174, they would no longer be required to have make that notification. Now, also currently, under uh, whatever law we have currently, is the license plate is registered also with the BMV, where that officer is able to run that license plate and find out if the individual, the owner of that vehicle, has a license, correct? Yes. So with this house bill, that could wipe that out, or we don't know? I'm not familiar with that piece. Correct, because you would not be required to get a license and share that information. So you could carry a concealed weapon in your car on your person without notifying the state of anything about your identity. Right, okay. Legally. Well, that, that's basically my main concern in regards to this resolution when I read through it. So, all right, thank you for answering that. Any questions, uh, comments from my colleagues on the... Oh. Just a real quick comment. And we also have some other, individual, and other individuals who will want to share their concerns too. This notification process is huge. It keeps everyone safe. When there's an interaction between a law enforcement officer and a person who has a concealed carry permit, it's huge. And then to expand that to long guns, uh, long guns being rifle. When there's an interaction between a law enforcement officer and a person who has a concealed carry permit, it's huge. And then to expand that to long guns, uh, long guns being rifles or shotguns, uh, individuals could walk around in public space with those bulges and they, they could actually um, uh, go into stores and be in parking lots or lock three or ball games or whatever. So it causes great concern. Also, um, the major has spoke. We also have Sergeant uh, Frank Williams as the FOP president. I um, just wanted to share some of his thoughts with the committee today as well. And actually, uh, Major, can you go anything further, Major? Sure, yeah, I have a couple of comments. Um, sorry. You're okay. All I'm right. going by rank. I'm just no, that's I'm sorry. fine. I didn't really need him to speak, but go ahead. Are you good? Major, are you going to speak or am I out? Yeah, let me just jump in and finish up. Uh, I had three specific concerns about it as I read through. One is, uh, as you read the, the new definition for deadly weapons, it appears as though we have to follow suit with other states in their definition of deadly weapon. And I'm concerned that other states are going to be able to inform our understanding of what a deadly weapon means without any ability to impact that decision. It appears as though the House bill requires us to uh, adopt other states' definition of deadly weapon. So that's okay. a concern that I have. All right. Um, Thanks. A second concern, uh, under 2923-111, uh, it appears as though that can be construed to restrict law enforcement from intervening in the event that that officer, through their education, training, and experience, would recognize a weapon that appears to be an automatic weapon. So let's say even a person walking down the street carrying an open carry automatic rifle, my belief, based on what I read at 2923-111, we wouldn't be allowed to detain them for the purpose of inspecting the weapon to see if it's fully automatic. This is just my brief understanding of what I read. And then under 2923.12B1, uh, this is what uh, was spoken about previously, removes a requirement to promptly notify law enforcement. I believe this, uh, as Mr. Brown has said, is really the linchpin about why we should oppose the bill as written because if we're, if we're well into an encounter with a lawful detention of a person on the street and the law enforcement officer becomes aware that the weapon is in the, in the car, the reaction on both sides of that equation at that particular time becomes particularly right. problematic and then the chances of violence or use of force occurring as a result of that, I think, go up dramatically. So just for that purpose all by itself, I would support the uh, resolution. No, I appreciate that. That's why it's catching me off guard that I thought Governor DeWine was very, very pro-police and I believe this bill is anti-police. Go ahead, Mr. President Frank. <laughs> Williams. Thank you. Uh, I am Frank Williams, President of the Fraternal Order Police, and uh, without rehashing what they've uh, already thrown on the table several times, I just want to make sure that uh, the committee is aware that uh, just for the safety and the welfare of both the Fraternal Order Police members and the citizens of Akron, I just uh, 
I speak in uh, support of this resolution and that uh, I'm applauding that the city is against House Bill. Um, I think it's uh, important that, uh, that one of the bigger ones is the importance, importance of uh, uh, citizens that are carrying these guns. It's just so important that our officers who have trained over and over again how to handle these kind of situations, it just makes it so much safer for everybody concerned that if we know that someone is carrying a gun, and I know the, the bad guys don't sometimes follow that rule, but uh, I, I think this just would complicate things even more just to know that uh, just that heightened awareness that you have, that you know that someone in that car possibly has a firearm, and I think it's important that, at least for our safety and the safety of those people in the vehicle, that uh, that this House bill be uh, defeated, and uh, we support this resolution. Thank you, Frank. I appreciate that. Um, before I uh, move on, what was I going to say? Oh, hey, yeah, I'm anxious to get the copy of this House bill. I want to see who these sponsors are to this. Uh, any other questions or comments from committee members, other council members? Oh, who we got? Mr. Fusco. Thank you, Thanks Mr. For Chairman. Know. Thank you. Um, no, j just that um, this council has been on the record how many times in terms of this unreasonable legislation that seems to come from Columbus on a continued basis, and now where's it going to end? especially with something like this. I mean, it, they, they, they've liberalized the laws in terms of, you know, entering schools, entering ch churches, bars, restaurants. Um, and now, uh, I, and of course, we've, we've seen the erosion of our home rule in order for us to do something about these type of situations. We, we, our hands are totally tied because they've taken away our home rule or worked on eroding that that piece of it I'm just um, the majority of Americans want reasonable legislation reasonableness um, I just where's it gonna end and and this is at the very beginning of this term to see this kind of legislation coming forward is disturbing mm, thank you councilman I appreciate that back to uh, Ellen she Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just, um, working off of uh, Councilman Fusco's comment, I did want to raise another uh, issue, and some of you may be aware of House Bill 228, which passed at the end of last session, um, and it actually, uh, Governor Kasich vetoed that, and it passed over his veto, and that essentially purports to, um, while we don't think they could strip any more of our local control, it essentially purports to strip all control from, from local cities um, and communities as far as gun regulation going so far as to say that any laws we passed are null and void, even if they mirror uh, or in our line with state and federal law. So we're looking at that and our options um, as far as a challenge on a home rule basis, but just wanted to bring that to your attention as well. Um, parts of that bill have already gone into effect and other parts are, are gonna go into effect in September, particularly the uh, excessive preemption portion. So we will give you guys more information about that and keep you um, informed as to our strategy. Okay, thanks, Alan, I appreciate that. Uh, I did have a hand up over there first, all due respect. Councilwoman uh, Mobian. Yeah, I certainly agree with everything I've heard. Do we have any idea why they think this makes sense? I mean, it sounds like the wild, wild west that you're just allowing people to go anywhere and be any place and have any kind of weapon they want to have. Is there any kind of rationale that makes any kind of sense? I won't um, attempt to speak for the proponents of this legislation. I do know, like I said, that it's been introduced basically every General Assembly session. I think there are, are certain groups that would like to see as little regulation of gun ownership as possible. And that's basically it. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Amobian. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Keith. This isn't a question, this is just a statement. Um, our men and women in blue deserve better. The people in these chambers deserve better. And my grandbabies deserve better than this bill getting any farther. So um, I would like to have to make a motion for a suspension of the rules with this. Oh, I'll second okay that. Yeah. So we are, were we done with conversation? Yeah. 
Well, let's we'll vote, and we'll, since she's already made the motion, we got to vote, and then we'll con we can continue the conversation for, out of respect. So she made the motion. Councilwoman Keith, I second that. Uh, committee members, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right, I want my name added to that, even though I believe this evening it will pass council as a whole. But all right, we'll continue the discussion, brief discussion before we adjourn. Anything else? Thank you. All right, we're adjourned. Thanks. Okay, next we'll have Parks and Recreation as soon as the chairman's ready. whatever's on sale because I, I I lose my shirt in there on that stuff people don't Mr. Chairman, Mr. Freeman will not be here, but yes, sir. he'll Thank be here you. tonight. Thank you. I'd like to call Park and Rec meeting to order. Make note that all members are present, except for, as our clerk has noted, Mr. Freeman, who did call in and let us know that he wouldn't be able to make it. Get approval, please, of our last meeting's minutes, which were on March 25th. Second, please. The motion is second. If there are any questions, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Motion carries. Here we have one piece before us today, and it's a uh, ordinance authorizing director of the Department of Neighborhood Assistance or his designee to enter into a contract with the Cadillac Catholic Charities, excuse me, Community Service Corporation for the operation of uh, the summer recreation program for youth with disabilities and declaring emergency. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman Neal and members of the Parks and Rec Committee. Uh, the City of Akron has helped fund the Sum Fun Day Camp for children with disabilities for over 35 years. 
city of Akron has made it possible for these vulnerable campers to access high quality summer programming. The program lasts seven weeks, seven weeks. It focuses on providing youth with opportunities to practice skills that will help them maintain their skills and learning throughout the summer months. From 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. each day, the campers participate in activities that allow them to practice fine motor activities, uh, activities such as arts and crafts, cooking, fishing, swimming, horseback riding, rope challenges, and all kinds of field games. The Sum Fun program makes a notable improvement in the campers' ability to maintain or improve their independence, which is crucial for their eventual uh, ability to enter the workforce. And where our money goes, the funding from the city of Akron, it's used to offset costs of providing nursing services, transportation, to maintain or improve their independence, which is crucial for their eventual uh, ability to enter the workforce. And where our money goes, the funding from the city of Akron, it's used to offset costs of providing nursing services, transportation, activities, personal care, activities, personal care and supervision to youth with uh, various disability, uh, development disabilities. And then in 2017, uh, they start providing shuttle services that uh, went out of two of our community centers to help the parents to, to take care of their transportation needs. I do have a handout for all of council. I will pass it out uh, momentarily here. Uh, supervision to youth with uh, various disability, uh, development disabilities. And then in 2017, uh, they start providing shuttle services that uh, went out of two of our community centers to help the parents to, to take care of their transportation needs. I do have a handout for all of council. I will pass it out uh, momentarily here. Uh, we had 35 youth, we had 35 youth from the city of Akron that participated in the 2018 program. Actually, there was a total of 48 Summit County wide, but 35 of those uh, part were city of Akron residents. I have the breakdown by the zip codes also. And that was a five, there was an increase of five individuals because we had 30 Akron residents in 2017. From the city of Akron that participated in the 2018 program, Actually, there was a total of 48 Summit County wide, but 35 of those uh, part were city of Akron residents. I have the breakdown by the zip codes also. And that was a five, there was an increase of five individuals because we had 30 Akron residents in 2017. And I will entertain any questions, and I will entertain any questions that anybody may have. Okay, thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Valley, I do have a few questions, but I'll ask members of the committee if they have any questions first before I ask mine. I know we support this program all the time, and I, I know it's a beneficial program. Um, my question, do we have anything similar like this for uh, any summer programs just for things that anybody may have? Okay, thanks, Mr. Uh, Mr. Valley. I do have a few questions, but I'll ask members of the committee if they have any questions first before I ask mine. I know we support this program all the time, and I, I know it's a beneficial program. Um, my question, do we have anything similar like this for uh, any summer programs just for children in general? Children in general, where the city, city underwrites them? We have uh, summer day camps at most of all our community centers. And years ago, this program took place one year, was at Summit? few years it was at Mason Park, for years it was at different uh, uh, community centers, but just the cost of the transportation and having those uh, critical... Uh, where, where the city, city underwrites them? We have uh, summer day camps at most of all our community centers, and years ago this program took place one year, it was at Summit, a few years it was at Mason Park, for years it was at different... Uh, uh, community centers, but just the cost of the transportation and having those uh, critical uh, services like nurses, like nursing, and uh, those types of services, uh, they they moved it to uh, uh, Camp Christopher. But yes, we have we have day camps at each one of our community centers 
during the seven or eight week uh, summer program. Are they, are they underwritten or are they paid for through fees through the parents? Uh, they're pay, paid for fees. Through fees? Yes. Okay. Uh, those types of services, uh, they, they moved it to uh, uh, Camp Christopher. But yes, we have, we have day camps at each one of our community centers during the seven or eight week uh, summer program. Are they, are they underwritten or are they paid for through fees through the parents? Uh, they're pay, paid for fees. Through fees? Yes. Okay. Um, I, uh, again, in full support of uh, this, I think all of us are, it just makes, makes me think, um, sometimes when we think of disabilities, we think of uh, some of the more traditional ones that we think that uh, are outlined. I'm just uh, in in light of what our conversation about uh, again in full support of uh, this. I think all of us are. It just makes makes me think. Um, sometimes when we think of disabilities, we think of uh, some of the more traditional ones that we think that uh, are outlined. I'm just uh, in in light of what our conversation about. Um, just the, the uh, I'll use the term negative energy that flows through our community and wanting to be proactive against some of that in the, in, in the summer and especially understanding the uh, repercussions of children that are impacted um, or are in those environments where there's a lot of negative uh, energy. I, I'd like to see us just the, the uh, I'll use the term negative energy that flows through our community and wanted to be proactive against some of that in the, in, in the summer, and especially understanding the uh, repercussions of children that are impacted um, or are in those environments where there's a lot of negative uh, energy. I, I'd like to see us, we just passed a budget, uh, put some thought on how to support our Park, park and Recreation Department to be able to provide some some of these experiences to children that uh, may have been impacted by the violence in our community. I mean, to be able to go fishing, to be able to go horseback riding where the parents may not have the money. Um, that's a conversation more so for council. Uh, in, re in relation to this sp uh, sp a specific piece of legislation, um, if there aren't any questions, uh, Madam uh, Council. Mr. Chairman, not a question, but I just want to say I appreciate um, the breakout and seeing how the resources are being dispersed really throughout the city to support children um, uh, with disabilities to participate in summer camp. So thank you for I that. I appreciate that. Yeah, this is helpful. Thank you. Any other questions from members of committee or any members of council? Consent okay. agenda would be perfectly fine. Okay. We have plenty of time here. Okay. Thank you. The motion is second for consent. If there are any questions, all in favor? All right. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Hardy? I just want to make a plug that uh, happy April, but then also the applications for this year's Parks Challenge are opening today. And Bridget is, yep, Bridget is more than happy to come to ward meetings. If you don't have Bridget's uh, info, I will make sure that Sarah and Holly have it. But she can come to ward meetings, community meetings, whatever you need her to go to over the next month to promote the event or to promote the application process. And that apl application can be found on akronparks.org. Thank you, Mr. Hardy. The amount? Thank you, Mr. Chair. What's the, how much money do we have? Uh, we have 200000 this year. So to, we're anticipating two parks each to get a $100,000 grant unless we get, like what happened last year, the Knight Foundation or someone. Are we looking uh, for? Transit. Are we looking for some some more dollars so we can get three? Always looking for more dollars. Yeah. But yeah, last year the dollars uh, materialized because the selection committee really fell in love with three parks. So the Knight Foundation chipped in to make it to make three work. Anything's possible, but we have budgeted for sure um, two hundred thousand dollars for this so year. So part of our role is to make them fall in love with a third Thank park. You. Get get all neighbors, friends, allies to, uh, to pitch their park, to apply for their park, um, give us their best ideas. But again, it's not so much how great your ideas are, it's, it's your fervor for the neighborhood and how you can bring people together 
through our planning process. So you don't have to be the world's greatest designer. You just have to be passionate about your neighborhood. So let me ask you this. It, have, we, have we considered asking um, the Civics Commons for resources? They do provide resources. In fact, last year, um, they provided uh, resources for all of the three planning processes, but then they also hosted a workshop, a half-day workshop for those that did not win but wanted to uh, bone up on their grant writing or on um, other resources like KAB that could help in the meantime. So yes, Civic Commons is a partner on this year as well. Okay, thank you. See, we have Mr. Uh, Valley and Mr. Rice. Have some more information for us? We just want to make a plea with council. Um, we, we need to hire at least 15 lifeguards and uh, Council should have received the PDL that went out Friday from uh, HR Director Rice. And uh, he saw in our survey and our strategic plan that aquatics is very extremely important to all the residents in the city of Akron. And our goal is to open up both pools each day, Reservoir and Perkins Pool, and that would be Monday through Saturday. So we feel that we need at least 16 lifeguards, but I'm gonna uh, refer to Director Rice and he's gonna talk a little bit about it. Yes, we do need um, uh, at least a dozen lifeguards at this point. It's a great position. It pays, I think, uh, what, 11 15 an hour? They're going to get a, maybe a 2% raise. And plus whatever raises are negotiated. In addition, uh, if kids have the ability to swim but they haven't been trained as a lifeguard, we've uh, put together with the, with the Division of Department of Neighborhood Assistance a training program that would reimburse the kids if they take a job if they keep the job all summer with the city of Akron, or we will reimburse them for the training. So it's just a great opportunity for kids to get some summer experience and, and to you know, help us, uh, you know, help the little kids have a great summer. Ms. Sims. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So here's a, um, a thought. Do, are we partnering with APS possibly as a place where our kids can really learn about water safety since we have uh, a school right across the street um, and use we have been working with the Firestone High School swim team uh, but we do have our summer program with the I forget it's either the Y or the American Red, Red with the Y that we do our, our summer uh, swimming safety program so we do that at both Reservoir and uh, Perkins Pool so we do partner with with the Y on that. So I'm just thinking here's a real, a really good potential neighborhood community learning center water safety pool opportunity for us for those kids who live in the neighborhood who are not a part of the Firestone Park. I mean Firestone High School swim team, but we have classroom availability there. It just seems like it would be a natural fit to support uh, water safety education right in the community. Before the requisitions were posted uh, through the HR department, we did do a, a press release, so we did get that out there. But uh, we reduced the age requirement to 17 as long as they've completed their junior year of high school. Uh, let me so. back up for my, I'm not talking just about the, um, uh, the, the lifeguards, I'm talking about the children also. So the children from the neighborhood who will be access, accessing that resource to talk about water safety as a part of uh, an overall plan to keep them safe while they're in the, I know we, we looked at some of that as we look at some of the lake so that people, the young folks understand uh, that the water can be dangerous. Um, even they, my parents used to tell me I could choke on a teaspoon. I don't know if that's true or not, but I believed it back then. But I know a whole body of water, like a swimming pool, could, could be potentially dangerous. Uh, if I'd just like to add on to that. I think the first part of being acc acclimated to the water is being exposed to the water. So if we can get you know kids to to be trained and become lifeguards, we can we can uh, acclimate a whole generation of children to the water, and you know have them be a part of water safety programs. This is a job that historically I've been here for three years. We've had trouble filling these positions for each of the three years that I've been here. I just think it's a shame. It's something that we should be doing for our children across the city and in certain neighborhoods. And I agree with you 100%, but I, again, I said I value the community learning center there and I value its potential as a resource 
to help us educate the children also who are accessing that invaluable resource that we call a pool. So perhaps maybe, um, I don't know, uh, maybe we do it in conjunction with possibly some reading programs that are going on over there. We support that um, as a body here um, to, to figure out how we might include that as a part of um, some summer education. Well, the requisitions are out there of any Council members have nieces, nephews, neighbors, you know, anybody out there. It's, like I said, 17 years old if they completed their junior year. And, and time is the, the essence. I mean, we're, we're not panicking, but, you know, it's going to be here before we know it. And right now, I believe we do have three, and we, we need at least a dozen more. So anybody get the word out there. Well, he's uh, less panicky than, than I am. I, I am imploring everyone that if they know anybody who has uh, intermediate swimming skills, this is a job that they can go and get, and we'll hire them tomorrow. Question, question please. Um, if I heard you correctly, it sounds like there's a cost for them initially to take this class? Did there was a, a, a training reimbursed? course that was $99 but we've just made a decision if a young person works for us during the course of the summer, we will, we will reimburse them that $99 course training. So, so there still would have to be some out of pocket, it sounds like, initially. At least initially, but you know, as the weeks go by, we will continue to, to evaluate what we're doing here. The bottom line here, Councilman, is we need lifeguards. So, I, I, and that, that's the thing, because I think, as you know, the challenge would, would be to get the young people initially, um, but it's almost like uh, you know that that upfront cost I think would be uh, something that would be uh, prohibitive for a lot for a lot of them. So if we can work on finding a way to to do away with that, I think that would that would help us. I mean, one of the challenges we have is that uh, not all of our children are exposed to you know the opportunities for. We only have one school in the whole. Even though we built all these new schools, only one school has a pool, mm -hmm. so not all of our children have access to that. And now that the Urban League doesn't have a pool, you know, uh, I don't know if, if, if your family doesn't have a membership at the uh, Jewish Center or the Y, you don't learn how to swim. And so that's, that, that's, that's, a, that's a challenge, yeah. Mm -hmm. I heard Ball Street too, but uh, so that, that, that's another one. But so, uh, yeah, if, if there's a way to, um, do away with that cost, I think it, it may help. And you said you've already uh, gotten information out to all of the high schools? Yes, and we're gonna continue to do so throughout this. One th good thing about it, and I guess I do agree with uh, Mr. Valley, we're still in very, very early May, April, so we gotta have a good eight weeks before these pools start to open, is that mm -hmm. statement? So we're gonna do whatever we can to get as many students e exposed to this, to this unique employment opportunity for them. Yes, and we have been, I've reached out to a, a bunch of the local swim teams. I have a passion about this because uh, I'll just be very honest with you. My daughter was exposed to the, to the water at a very young age, and she ended up being a swimmer in college. So I'd like to see this. I'd like to see our kids be involved in these aquatic activities. Okay. Thank you for that information. Thank you. Okay. Anything else to come before committee? If not, motion to adjourn. Okay, all right, we're adjourned.